Today, we are talking about my bread and butter, installing cameras. That's what Silver Hammer Surveillance is all about. Started back in 2001 when I was a loss prevention manager at Shopco, a regional retailer. We used to install our own cameras to catch bad guys and bad girls. Taught myself how to do all this. Then in 2008, I used that experience to start Silver Hammer, and that's what we do. We install cameras for people. Last week, we had a part one of a video where I showed you the unboxing and the specs and all the details of our go-to POE NVR wired camera system. The system we install every day residentially, got a lot of calls from across the country. We're starting to ship them everywhere. And so now we want to teach you how to install them. So when I send them to you, you know what you're doing. So this is part two of that video and let's show an installation. Let's get started. What up everybody, it's George Langebeer with Silver Hammer Surveillance. Here on the channel, we talk smart home tech, we talk home security, we have videos every Tuesday. Like and subscribe and keep supporting us. We very much appreciate it. Follow us on the socials, particularly Instagram, where I share a lot of insight on Silver Hammer and myself, and we talk about tech and all sorts of cool stuff there too. All right, so today, part two of a video we started last week where we did the unboxing and review and specs and everything of my go-to POE NVR wired camera system. Told you all about it, and then we told you we were gonna install one. Why are we doing that? Because we're getting calls from across the country, people that wanna buy these systems. We've been shipping them out everywhere, but people are a little nervous to install them, and I don't blame them, that's why we exist. We've always helped people here locally, but I feel like if you actually saw us install one, that you might feel more comfortable, or at least having somebody help you do it, and that's what this is all about. So, on the topic of people calling us for these systems, there's been some confusion. We've had a ton of calls on this, which is fantastic. And we will ship these bad boys and talk to anybody across the country. My contact information is in the link of the description of this video. Call me. And why am I saying that? Alibi. Alibi Security is the brand we are talking about. Now, there's some confusion because Alibi used to be called Super Circuits back in the day. It's actually what they were called when I started with them. And Alibi still has some entry level systems that they sell under the super circuits brand and then you might actually see a couple of them under the alibi brand but anything that you see online or available to the public it is entry-level stuff and it is the equivalent of lorex night owl and swan and you know i call those the drug dealer cameras now alibi just wanted to have different levels to offer to different people and different consumers and different budgets but what we are talking about here today is a dealer exclusive Top of the line, the good stuff for your house. So a lot of people have been calling Alibi directly and then they're getting confused because they're telling them about this lower level stuff. They're not talking about the dealer stuff. That's because you're just getting some salesperson from Super Circuits. The Alibi sales team is dealing with the dealers directly and that's what we are selling and talking about here today. We're talking about the dealer exclusive stuff that you can only get from a dealer. You're not gonna find out anything about this online. So that's what these videos are for, is to tell you everything you'd want to research. So when you're going to buy a system like this, you think this is a great idea, you love these videos, fantastic, thank you very much. But if you want to buy one, call me. Or if you're lucky enough to have an Alibi dealer, just know you're not going to get this information online. You have to call an Alibi dealer. And I don't want you to get confused by doing that, because it's just going to throw you off. This is the good stuff, that's what we're talking about today. So let's get on to the installation. Okay, so for this installation, we are going to my friend Christine's house. She's letting us install a system on her house. I very much appreciate her being available to us. Fantastic. Thank you, Christine. She's actually been in one of our other videos, and she's been a big help to the channel, so thank you. And then you're going to see me and John. John is my left-hand man, my right-hand man. There's not even a good enough title for John. I don't even know how to describe him because he's priceless to me. There would be no silver hammer without John. You're going to meet him today. He's my attic warrior. He's... He's everything to me. Without, without John, there is no silver hammer. So you get to meet him today. So we're gonna install this system together and we're gonna get started with showing you what tools you need. Real quick before we talk tools, let's talk cable. Because this is an NVR or a PoE system, we are using Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6 cable. Do some research on the differences. This video will be too long if I go into that. But a lot of houses will either already have that RAN, and if it's Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6, you're good or if you need to run this yourself, which is the purpose of this video, we can do one of two things. Now at Silverhammer, we use Cat5e and that's what we're gonna send you. We can either do 100 foot cables for each camera you buy. So if you buy four cameras, we'll, buy, we'll send you 400 footers or five cameras, 500 footers, so on and so forth. Those are already gonna have the connectors on them. And so that'll make it a little easier for you, a little 
more difficult to fish sometimes, but it's gonna be easier because you're just plugging stuff in. Now, if you feel like you're a little bit more of a pro, we can send you a thousand feet of this cable, a little more industrial grade, what we would use in the install, and then you can make the connections yourself. Now, after I show you the tools, John is actually gonna show you how to make these connections if you do choose to do it that way and you've never done it before. All right, on with the tools. All right, here's what we need on the bed of my Gladiator here. We've got the RJ45 connectors. Those connectors go on each end of the cable. We've got some wire cutters. We've got a Klein tools, which we also use for wire cutting. We got a spade bit or a circle bit. We got some zip ties. We got a fish tape. We've got a drill and we've got fish sticks or a fishing tool, call them whatever you want, but that's how we fish the cable. Then we got a Klein tool that actually pushed those RJ45 connectors on. And then we have our attic light, which John lives by when he's in the attic. All right, let's talk about these in a little more detail. All right, let's take a little deeper dive into what we have here. We've got the RJ45 connectors. Now there's two different types there. This is gonna make more sense when you see John make the connection, but you've got the normal type and then you have what's called pass-through which makes your life a little easier. They're a little more expensive, a couple bucks, but they're well worth it. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. We've got some electrical tape. We've got some wire cutters. We've got some Klein tools there with the red handle. Now we use those both to cut cable and also to strip cable. Uh, that just happens to be our go-to tool to strip a cable, but you can pretty much use anything that you might be used to stripping cable with. Then you've got a circle spade bit. You can see the one there, that's a one inch. We like a one inch hole underneath our cameras. That gets us enough room to put all the bulky connections up from the camera up into the soffit or the attic. And your tendency is going to want it to be to make a small hole possible uh, just to get a Cat5 cable outside. But keep in mind, you got all those connectors. So a one inch is a good size to get all that up there without having a huge hole in your house. So then we've got our drill there. Now that's just really for the Phillips head to drill the cameras to the, to the house. And then we also use that for the spade bit to make those uh, circles for the cameras to stick the the cable through which you'll see now we pre-drilled those holes in this case just for the sake of time that's really has no bearing in this but just know that you're going to drill some holes to get the cameras through the attic which will make more sense here in a second you got a fish tape now that's just a way to fish the cable from outside to the attic and vice versa that blue fish tape is a little more flexible gives you some more options and then you've got some fish sticks which you see there in the white those long sticks that's up to 15 feet all three of those attached together if you want them to that's our go-to, just a little easier to fish from outside to the, the attic. You'll see me and John do that in a few seconds. Now, also for John purposes, he's the attic warrior. He's the one up in the attic all the time. Those do glow in the dark, which is gonna help because a lot of attics are, are dark all the time. So that glow in the dark is gonna be helpful to whoever's in your attic. This is usually a two person job, by the way. If you do it with one person, it's gonna make it very difficult, especially if it's your first time. So if you have a second person, one in the attic, one outside, which you'll see how we do it here in a second, that is going to be the best way to go. And then you see our attic light here. This isn't a great shot of it, but that's an actual attic light that you can hang to a rafter up in the attic. That's our go-to light, but some people already have lights in their attic and that's great. But if you don't, you're going to want to have some sort of light because it's very important that you're safe up in the attic. You don't want to fall through your ceiling. You want to make sure you're on the, on the rafters and the two by fours and everything up there. So light is very important. I can't stress that enough. Light that sucker up when you're up there. But anyway, that's John's go-to attic light. But that's it, we're ready to go. So let's have John show you how to put those RJ45 connectors on. Okay, so first you can see he's stripping the wire there. That's what we're using the clients for. He's gonna pull the white casing off and then you're gonna be left with these strands. Now you're gonna wanna pull these apart and there's gonna be four different strands to pull apart. Get the orange, the blue, the green, and the brown. You're gonna untwist those. And there's really, you know, no rhyme or reason to this. You just wanna get them all untwisted. And then there's a, there's a color situation here where you're gonna put the connector in a certain color order. Now that Klein tool there, the yellow that you can see off on the right that he's gonna to use to put this on, it actually has a diagram on it as far as what these colors need to be, what order. And so he's gonna straighten them out here. He's got them all untwisted. He's going to straighten them, out, straighten them out and put them in the color order that he knows he needs to. Now, you can look online and, and find that color diagram. But again, if you find, I'll put the links in the description of that Klein tool because it's a great tool for this, especially if you're doing pass-through connectors, which will make more sense here in a second. But just follow that diagram and you're good. But you can see he's kind of picking these apart and getting ready to put these colors in order. And so that's what's going on here. 
And this is a, it's a tedious process, but um, you'll get used to it real quick. So don't be intimidated by this. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to just do this. Um, John's doing a good job here, but, um, but yeah, the key is having those in the correct color order. And then you just want enough length to, to work with. That's what he's doing here. He's got enough length to work with, and you'll see in a second what he's going to do with them. But now he's got them in the color order, and he's going to cut them off to make it a little shorter. And then what he's going to do is slide that in a connector here in a second. All right, so now he's going to actually put an RJ45 connector on. Now, again, there's a normal RJ45 connector and a pass-through RJ45 connector. He's going to do it both ways. The first time, it's going to be a pass-through. Now, the pass-through means that at the top of the connector, the cables are going to come out. And it makes it easier to put them on because you don't have to have an exact length. It's going to make more sense here in a second. So he's going to slide those in. He's going to put those in those little slots. On the RJ45 connector, you'll see those little slots. You're going to want the color to match up to the diagram, either on the tool or that you found online. And the pass-through means you have those cables coming out the top. And what you're going to do is you're just going to cut those off and make it nice and flush. But that way you don't have to work with it like an exact length. And there you go. He's showing you the diagram and that it matches. And you just want to make sure those colors match. He's going to put it in there and it's going to cut the ends of that off and it's going to make it nice and flush like any Cat5 cable you've ever seen. It's going to get rid of all that excess. So he's going to crimp that. It's going to cut it for him. That's why this, this Klein's tool is, is a, a cool tool. It does everything for you. And again, that will be in the links of the description. So there you go. So you might have a little excess, but that was chopped off. So you just need to take it off. But there you go. A nice clean RJ45 connection. Okay, so the normal RJ45 connector is going to be pretty much the same process, except you're not going to have the pass-through, which will make more sense here in a second. So there he is stripping it again, just like before. He's going to get his strands. He's going to untwist them. It's going to... So again, you've got the orange, you've got the blue, you've got the green, you've got the brown. Get each pair untwisted so they're separated. Then you're going to put them in the order that you find on the diagram, either in that tool or online or wherever you found it. Like I said, there's several different resources that'll tell you that. But there he goes. He's got them all untwisted again. Then he's going to put them in that order. And again, this is relatively tedious, but um, just be patient. You'll get used to it, and then you'll start to fly, fly through it. All right, starting to straighten them out. You want to get them straightened out and then in order. And this is where it's tedious because you kind of just got to, since the color order is so important, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes to get them flat and have them stay. And then you're trying to hold them with your thumb. And then, but like I said, you'll get used to it. John's a pro. He flies through it. You don't want to keep them straight like that. So you're going to keep pulling them. That'll also help you keep them in order. And there you go. Get your orange. If you look at that color order, that is key. Make sure it is in that order. Now, the regular connector is not going to have that pass through. So you're going to want to cut it to length. You're not going to have that excess to cut off. So there you go. There it is. It's got no hole in it for the pass through. You're just going to put it straight into its little slots and you, you kind of want it to have it to an exact length. That's why the couple dollars for the pass through is worth it because then you have a little more flexibility if you're, if, if you're new at this. All right. So he kind of does the rule of thumb, that little part in his thumb there. And then you want to make sure they're straight because that's key. When they get in that connector, you want them all to be flush. And again, you're going to hold them in their color order. It's going to have that little, some, some cables will have that little white string. You want to pull that away because that's not part of it. So he just pulled that white string away and now he's left with the actual strands that he separated and the colors are in order. And then you put it straight in there. And the difference is that you don't have anything sticking through the end of it. So you're going exact length. You're going to push them all the way through. So they're flush and they get a good connection at the end there with those pins. And that's it. So that is the difference between a regular connector and a pass-through. You're not going to have that excess to cut off, but it means you want to be a little more exact with your length as far as the cable and that connector. But once again, you're going to crimp it on there to make sure that connection is on there and you can't just pull it off. That's what that climb tool is going to do. Or if you had a pass-through, it would also cut that excess off as well. 
but there you go. Nice, clean connector. You can do this either way. Uh, that Klein tool is cool, key though, just like he's pointing at it. He loves that thing. Again, that'll be in the link of the description. I'd recommend using that, but there you go. That's an RJ45 connector. You're gonna do that at each end of the cable. One's gonna plug into the camera. One's gonna plug into the MDR on the other side. Let's move on to the actual installation. All right, so before John gets the lovely task of going into the attic and we start this installation, let's talk about what you wanna think about as far as the actual setup and installation itself on your home. So for me, and I've done a video on this before, check out the link of the description below for this video. I'll also put it up above, whatever. Check out that video. But I talk about the locations you wanna put security cameras. And for me, it's all about entry points. So you're gonna have a ranch, you're gonna have two story, you're gonna have three story, you're gonna have split levels. Those are the general floor plans you're gonna be working with. Some cameras have nooks and crannies that are a little different, but for the basics, you got ranch, two story, three story, split level. It's all about entry points. So you want the front door, you want the garage door, you want your back door, and then any side doors you have. So typically what we do, if you're buying a four to eight camera system, that is two in the front, put one on each corner and cross each other, put two in the back, one on each corner and cross each other. And then the sides are your optional location. It's really all about if you have entry points on the sides. If you don't, you don't need to really worry about that because a thief can't really do anything over there unless you're being targeted for vandalism or whatever. But if your budget only allows for four, put two in the front, two in the back and cross each other. Now in Christine's situation, we're doing six cameras. I'm not gonna show you every one that we installed just for the interest of time. This video will be way too long, but choose points that get all your entry points. And again, it's usually two in the front, two in the back, and then one on each side. And then you could maybe put one in your garage for the garage situation, that would be optional. It all depends on your budget. Then let's talk about where you're gonna put your NVR. Now the NVR, you're really gonna to wanna to put anything, but you wanna talk about, you wanna think about things like, are you just gonna view on your phone and tablet, or do you want it hooked up to a monitor? Now you have to remember you're at the mercy of the attic in this case, and you know, everybody's gonna be a little bit different. So I'm just trying to cover the most basic install that I can for this video. But you're gonna be at the mercy of your attic where you put the NVR because you need to bring the wires from the cameras down to wherever the NVR is. So if you have four cameras, you're gonna have four wires coming down from your attic to wherever you put that NVR. So that's first thing to think about. And then again, like I said, are you gonna wanna put a monitor there or whatever? If you don't put a monitor there, you're a lot more flexible because then all you really need is power because we've got these little guys. These changed our lives a long time ago. They're called power line adapters. You put one of these by your router, you put one of these by your NVR. It's got a Cat5 cable from this. You just plug them into a power outlet. And basically what it does is it runs internet over your electrical. And so it allows you to put this NVR anywhere you want that has power because these can run internet back to your, your router. So again, you put one by your router, one by your NVR, runs it over the electrical, and these are very reliable. We use them almost every day. They're fantastic. They changed our lives back in the day when they came out. But be thinking where you're gonna put that NVR. But if you use one of these power line adapters and you're, let's say you're worried about somebody stealing your NVR, you can put it in a closet, you can put it in a laundry room, places where you have power that thieves won't think about it, and this allows you to do that. Otherwise, if you've got several internet jacks in your house or you've got your router in a specific place or in your office, be thinking about how you're gonna get that cable down to that NVR wherever you want it. So in her case, we used her bedroom. She had a TV in there. She had like a bookshelf we could put the NVR on. It was easy to run cables down the wall. We fished them through the wall, which I'll show you at the end. And then, then the TV kind of hid the wire mess because no matter what happens on a camera system like this, you're gonna have a little wire mess. now. IP systems are better than the analog HDTVI systems because they've got a bulkier coax cable and you got to split off power and, and that's a subject for another day. But when you're doing these IP systems, it's a pretty clean install because on the on the NVR side, you're just going to have however many Cat5 cables either coming out of your wall or if you don't feel like fishing it, just be creative on how you hide those cables for aesthetic purposes. There are of course going to be people out there that don't care about the aesthetics. You're just going to have them hanging there, whatever it may be. But obviously as professionals, we want to keep it clean. So anyway, think about where you want to put your cameras, how many cameras that means that you need, and where you're going to put the NVR. Okay, so we're going to start by having John go up into the attic. He's going to take the cable. He's going to take his attic light, and that way he's, he's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is be on the outside. I'm going to send him my fish tape or my fish sticks up in the attic. He's going to tape it, the cable to that, bring it out to me. But that's what he's going to do. So he's going to run it from the camera locations back to the central location where he put the NVR. 
And that's what John's going up there to do. Now I call John my attic warrior. He's been in places where I never thought I'd see him again. He's somehow wiggled through holes and attics and crazy things. So you're gonna know your attic pretty well, hopefully. And you send somebody up there and then have somebody on the outside. But all right, so we're gonna start by John going up there and then I'm gonna be ready on the outside with my tools. So I'm gonna have my drill, I'm gonna have the camera, I'm gonna have my spade bit. Now, again, we drill these holes in the interest of time. Uh, we did, we, we pre-drilled them, but you're gonna drill that hole and then you're gonna mount your camera once John has passed out the cable to me. And I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but one of the tools you're gonna want is a ladder. And again, a rule of thumb for me is to have the, the cameras to a spot where a thief would need at least a six foot ladder to get to them. So whether it's a soffit or way up on your soffit or whatever it is, at least make a thief have to reach for it or get a ladder for it. Don't put them in reach of a thief. But yeah, so I'm gonna go out there on my ladder. I'm gonna mount the camera. I'm gonna mount the camera ring first and that still leaves the hole exposed. And then John's up there stringing the cable through the attic and getting it to our location and then back to where the NVR is. In this case, it's in Christine's bedroom, which is pretty central in her house. So I'm gonna be ready for him. I'm gonna put my sticks up there and then I'm gonna wait for him to find it. Now that can be a challenge if you've never done it before, but that's where it's nice that the sticks glow in the dark. So have your attic person up there ready to look, for, and you're gonna to wanna to put these in the corners typically, like I said, front corners, back corners, whatever it may be. Even if you put them on the side, you're gonna either have them on your back corner or front corner. So be up there and be weary of trusses and everything up in your attic. You wanna have a clear shot for that fish stick to get from where you are outside to the person inside in the attic. And so just make sure that you pick a spot where you know you're not gonna be blocked by studs in the attic and all that stuff. So John's up there. I'm gonna pass the stick to him. He's gonna tape it to the stick, bring it out to me. He's already gonna have the connectors on him for me, which is great. So you can, for the purpose of this video, he actually made the connections uh, before we actually even went into the attic on a couple of these. And that was just to show you. And you can do that, or if you're talented enough and you're out there on the, you know, in my, in my spot where I'm up on the ladder, you could actually make the connections up there if you want. I just don't like messing with it on a ladder. So John's nice enough to pre-make them for me. But yeah, so you'll have your connectors. You just pass it out. You've got your camera ring up there. And then on these cameras, you'll see that on this particular camera, and again, this is my go-to camera. So one tool I forgot to mention is you're gonna have a little um, flathead screwdriver because these do have a little security screw on them and that makes them harder to steal. You're gonna wanna loosen that screw before you put the camera up there. And then I'm showing you here how you kinda wanna line that up. Now on the camera, you'll see an unlock and a lock, little icon, little picture there. You wanna line those up to first of all, twist the camera to pull them apart from its ring, from its mounting ring. And then you're gonna wanna line that up to put it back on there. And you can kinda see from that security screw, it little lines into a groove and then you've got like three little grooves around the ring. One of them actually has a groove to it. And this makes more sense as you're watching it here. So you can put it in the groove and then make sure that that security screw goes in the slot. And then you tighten that security screw to tighten the camera down. And then that makes that much more thief proof once that security screw is tightened. And then you put it up there and you adjust your angle. Now these turret domes have a little flexibility to them. The more you tighten that security screw, the tighter the camera is gonna be and it's gonna be left in its field of view. All right, so if you leave that security screw a little loose at first, then you can move the camera and these turret domes, that's why I like them so much, they're very flexible as far as getting the angle you want. Then once you've got it locked in, just tighten that security screw and that sucker will barely move. It'll have a little give to it, but you've gotta be up there to really mess with it to actually move it. So that's, that's good for anti-theft purposes. And then I'm just really good at adjusting the angle so I kind of can do this from the get-go but you and your partner, whoever is working with you, you want them to uh, maybe come back to the NVR when you're done, look at the camera shot, and then you'll be out there adjusting them on your ladder or whatever, and just making sure you get the most bang for your buck for the camera shot. Now, I like to start at the actual wall of the house and then go out my 109 degrees. You don't wanna to have too much of the house. You also don't wanna to have too much sky. So you want it to focus on your yard and you want it to be away from the house enough where you're not wasting valuable real estate on the actual house itself. So start basically at the very edge of the wall, go out as much as you can. You do want to try to stay away from shooting your cameras right in neighbors' windows, things like that. Now, the laws usually state in most states that you can have these cameras as long as it doesn't look like you're just straight up spying at your neighbors. But try to control that as much as you can. You got this nice wide angle that's going to be tough at times, but it is what it is. If you get a little bit of your neighbors in there, just don't look like you're spying on them. 
All right, so you basically you got your camera up there, you put your mounted ring up there, we passed the cable out to me, I connected the camera, I put it up there, I adjust my angle, and that's it. We've got that all done, then we're gonna go in Christine's bedroom in this case, and we're gonna set up the MVR. Now, before we set up the MVR, I should backtrack, we're gonna bring those cables down the wall to get them to the MVR. Now, in her case, like I said, she's got this TV there, and we just brought them down enough to be hidden by that TV because you wanna hide this wire mess as much as you can got a piece of furniture. So let's say you had a small entertainment center, but it was lower on the wall. You could actually fish those cables all the way down the wall, have them come up behind that piece of furniture, and you don't see cables at all. In this case, her TV's hiding them. Now, it wasn't as easy to hide everything in her case because her bookshelf is open, but if that had a closed back to it, you wouldn't even see these cables were there. So anyway, you want to think about how you're going to hide those cables. So as far as that fishing goes, John was up there in the attic. He's going to drill a hole in the top stud of that wall. And you can use a stud finder to do this, but up, up in the attic, you're gonna notice where the nails go into the studs. And so he's gonna pick a, a part of the stud where in the general location where we want this MVR, he's gonna drill his hole through those studs. And then I'm gonna drill a hole down low, in this case, but it was behind our TV. And then we're gonna use our fish stick or our fish tape in this case, go up there. John's gonna find the fish tape up in the attic. He's gonna send me all the cables. In this case, it was six of them down to me, and then I'm gonna connect them. We're gonna put the connectors on them and put them in the NVR. And then the NVR is PoE, what does that mean? That means power over ethernet. So these ports on the back of the NVR not only are gonna give you the video, but they're also gonna power the cameras. So you just got that one nice wire going to that port, it's gonna do the power in the video and that's it. You just gotta get the cable to that NVR and then you're done. So you're done with the hard part which is fantastic. So then you just set up your NVR now on this particular NVR, and I will do a deeper dive in this NVR. This video is already too long. I'm not gonna do that now. But once you set up the NVR, there's a wizard. It kind of walks you through it. And then all you have to do is scan a QR code to hook it up on your phone. So you're gonna get the Alibi Vigilant mobile app. You can see it here on Christine's, the example of it. But basically what you're gonna do is sign up for an account with Alibi, and it's what's called a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So back in the day when we did these systems, we had to do what's called port forwarding. And I'm not gonna to get too much into that, but basically what it meant is that your, your router in your house was actually hosting your cameras. And you were very reliant on that router to make your remote viewing work. And when I say remote viewing, I mean seeing it on your phone, tablet, PC, or Mac, or whatever it is. Now that presented a few different problems. Port forwarding, um, you get an IP address for your house, that IP address could change. It was a real pain in the butt. I'm not even gonna go into that because that's kind of a thing in the past. But in addition to that, it was also a little security risk because anytime you have something secure like this on your router, it's a little easier to hack. So now it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. You sign up with Alibi. They're going to host your cameras for free. And when I say host, it doesn't mean they're watching them. They're just hosting them on a secure server. And so that's all that server is for is to securely protect your cameras. So it takes out the security risk of your router, which is fantastic. So for people that are worried about hacking and all that stuff, this takes that out of the equation. So all you have to do is sign up for an account with Alibi on this app, scan the QR code, bam, there's your cameras. And then as far as the app goes, you know, you've got full functionality of the cameras. You can blow them up large. You can take still pictures. You can take video clips. Uh, you can enlarge, you can zoom. So if you take those still pictures and video clips, it actually saves it in the app first. So you're not wasting storage on your phone. And then you can, if you want to, you can save it to your camera roll. You can text it. You can email it to the police. So you can be on the beach in the Bahamas, and as long as you have cell service, you could send a clip or a video to the police or whoever you want to send it to. So the app is great in that regard. And again, with the high resolution, ca uh, high resolution camera, when you zoom in, it's got a nice, clear, beautiful resolution to it. And so the app really makes the camera shine. In addition to that, the app also has playback. So you can go back and search your past footage. Down at the bottom here, you'll have your events. You can just scroll with your finger between events. And again, watch that last video because we talk about all the different analytics these things have, both the camera and the NVR. And those are all the events you would have down in this timeline of the app. And so in addition to that, you can also see on Christine's here, we had a monitor. We had her TV. We just used one of the inputs, which is very handy. Number one, it gives you the full resolution of the cameras on a nice big screen. And number two, it's just nice to have it up all the time. I know she uses it to watch her, her pets and stuff. Um, so you have the app, you have you can do that on a phone or a tablet, then you can also do a monitor. So like I said, when you're figuring out where to put that in VR, in her case, it was important that she had a monitor. So we, we kind of picked this room for that purpose. 
But yeah, so on the NVR, you've got full access to the cameras. You can search, you've got all your settings. You can name your cameras. That's where you can set up all the analytics. You know, if you want to be alerted for vehicles or people or whatever it may be. And again, I will do a deep dive on that NVR. I just can't do it because this video would be way too long. Okay, so real quick, now that we've got this installed, let's just talk about the ports on the back of the NVR. We talked about this in the unboxing. But number one, you're going to use the PoE ports for your cameras. You're going to have the HDMI port, which you only need if you hook up a monitor like she did. And then you're going to have the Ethernet port, which is going to go either to your power line adapter or straight to an internet jack or straight to your router. That gives the NVR internet to allow you to hook up the mobile app and the iPad app and all that good stuff. And then you've got a USB port for your mouse. And then you've got another USB port either on the front or back for a flash drive. If something, a larger incident happens, you want to give it to the police. And then you've got your power. So that's it. And then in this case, we would start training the customer. We trained Christine. Now, again, that's where I can do a deeper dive. But just know if you buy something from me, as far as Alibi goes, you get lifetime tech support. They're in Austin, Texas. So it's US based. You're going to be talking to somebody in the United States. You can call them. They can help you set this up. There's online guides, but basically, you know, you can call me. It's not nearly as effective as I would be local. And we are pretty busy, but they are there for you and you have them for life. And again, if you need anything, just my contact is in the link of the description of this video. But this whole process, I'm going to reiterate, call me. If you find anything about Alibi or Super Circuits Online, it is their entry level stuff. So there was a lot of confusion on this and I just want to make this clear again. Do not try to research it because it's not going to happen. Their good stuff, the stuff in this video, is only available to their dealers. So basically, they have three different tiers. They have super circuits. They have some low-end alibi stuff, which is just for end users, people that are on budget. But if you want the good stuff, you're not going to find it online. That's what this video is for, to show it to you, to tell you that you need to call an alibi dealer. You can call me from anywhere, and I can ship it to you. So you don't even really need to find one. You can just call me. So again, my link is in the description below. My contact information is there and I will actually answer the phone. I find it shocking that so many people are surprised that I actually answer the phone. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a YouTube personality with a business in Omaha, Nebraska. So yeah, you're going to get me on the phone and I'm going to help you order this. We can either select the one in this video or I can tailor one for your budget, whatever it may be, but call me directly because it's going to save a lot of confusion because Alibi sales team it's just thinking you're calling for that low end stuff. They're not going to tell you any different because that's the phone number you called. It's the non-dealer line. They think you want that cheap stuff. That's it. They're not going to refer you to the dealer line. They're just not going to know that they're not, they're not trained for that. Their dealers are the ones that are supposed to be getting the high level calls. And so that's me. So just call me directly, save yourself a bunch of confusion. So what do you think? Easier than you thought, harder than you thought. If it was easier than you thought, welcome to our crew. You can install your system. We got your back, call us, we'll send it to you, get to installing. Harder than you thought, that's okay too. We can help you every step of the way. We'll help you pick the locations. Again, call me, you will get me on the phone. I'll help you through Google Earth. We'll pick your spots, you'll be good to go. And then just find an electrician in your area to run the cameras. They'll just take your instruction. They'll, they're used to running Cat5, Cat5e and Cat6. They'll run to the locations, they'll even probably mount the cameras for you, depending on what they charge you. So just check that out. But again, either of you, we got you every step of the way. I'd be happy to look at your place on Google Earth when you place this order. So look in the link in the description below. Give me a call. I want to thank Christine. I'm very grateful for her to help us in this situation. She's helped us with other videos. I think she'll help us in the future. Thank you, Christine. To John, my boy, I'd be lost without you. So Rammer would not exist. I thank the universe that you're with me every day. So thank you, John. Glad you got to meet him, everyone. So what do you think? Did you like this video? If you did, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday. Keep coming back for more. We appreciate your support. Check us out on the social. Instagram specifically. You can get more insight into me and Silverhammer and all that good stuff. We also talk tech there as well. So check us out. Until the next video. Peace and love.